أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون أياما معدودات فمن كان منكم مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر وعلى الذين يطيقونه فدية طعام مسكين فمن تطوع خيرا فهو خير له وأن تصوموا خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم وَمَنْ كَانَ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِّنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرِ وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا أخبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وعملا يا كريم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي. O oh servants of Allah and O oh children of Adam, indeed all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who said إن الله مع الذين اتقوا والذين هم محسنون. All praises belong to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala who said that indeed Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is with the people of taqwa and with those who do good. We praise Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. We seek His assistance and we seek His guidance and we seek refuge. In Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evils of our souls and the adverse consequences of our deeds. Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees guidance upon, then none can misguide him. And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees misguidance upon, then none can guide him. And peace and salutations be upon the final messenger, Muhammad the son of Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the one who said to Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiyallahu an, a sahabi, a companion that was beloved to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a companion that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent to Yemen as a propagator and as a judge and as a guide. He said to this beloved companion of his, be a person of taqwa in every circumstance you find yourself in. Ittaqullah haith ma kunt. 
peace and salutations be upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship besides one Allah, and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is his final messenger. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, and my dear fathers and mothers, I greet you with the greetings of peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters, it is said that the very first khutbah that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam completed upon his arrival to Medina was a khutbah dedicated to the topic that marks the opening of this conference today. And that is the topic of taqwa. And why shouldn't this topic be the opening of the sermons of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the opening of this conference today, especially when a taqwa was the advice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to previous nations before us as well as to the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Allah Almighty advised previous nations, the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, towards a taqwa and gaining this quality of taqwa in their life. And he also advised the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam towards adopting this quality of taqwa in their lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, substantiating this point that I've just shared with you, وَلَقَدْ وَصَّيْنَا الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ أَنِ اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ Allah says, and we indeed instructed those who were given the scripture before you to have taqwa, and we've advised you as well towards a taqwa. Taqwa, O servants of Allah, and O children of Adam, is a tremendous quality and lofty station. It forms the foundation of religion, and without it, one cannot say that they live a real life. By Allah, one cannot. Why? Because, my dear brothers and sisters, the abode and home of taqwa is the heart. And you and I are more hearts and souls than we are bodies. Understand this. And this becomes even clearer when we visit someone that we knew or someone that we befriended after they pass away. When we visit them, their body is in front of us. Their eyes are in front of us. Their functions are in front of us, but nothing is working. Why? Because Allah has removed the electricity that causes everything to work, which means that when you and I visit each other, we are actually visiting in a greater way each other's hearts and souls than we are visiting each other's bodies. Without taqwa, there can be no prosperity for us in this life and the next because the fruits of taqwa encompass the life of this world and the next. In taqwa, O servants of Allah and O children of Adam, we find precious gems, we find wealth, and we find success both in this world and the hereafter. Subhanallah. La ilaha illallah. It is as if all goodness of both this world and the next has been encompassed in this pearl and gem known as taqwa. Taqwa, O servants of Allah, is a term that along with its derivatives has been mentioned in the Quran around 240 times. Around 240 times. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes care of a particular word that denotes a particular quality so many times, then this should teach us how important this quality is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of us having this quality in our lives. It should teach us how well regarded this quality is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's no secret, O servants of Allah, that this quality of at taqwa is synonymous with the month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to witness Ramadan. Ameen. Now, brothers and sisters, whilst taqwa 
or the term itself is not foreign to the majority of us in the audience, if not all of us in the audience. The reality is that the, the notions of taqwa, the meanings of taqwa are foreign to the majority of us. And it is for this reason that I want to dedicate a portion of this talk, if not a large portion, towards discussing the meaning of a taqwa with the sole purpose of instigating a shift in terms of our understanding with this particular term. Taqwa, my dear brothers and sisters, according to many of us, because of the English translations that we have, means the fear of Allah, or means piety and righteousness, or means, and perhaps this is the best explanation, given the richness of the Arabic language, and the inabilities of the English language, we find a translation, and as I said, perhaps is the best translation, which denotes that taqwa refers to being God conscious. God conscious. But in reality, my dear brothers and sisters, these translations or these definitions and explanations only deal with a portion, a portion of the meanings of a taqwa. For when we look at the Quranic narrative, we find a plethora of meanings intended when the word taqwa is used by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, depending on context, right? Let's take some examples of this. Oh, before that, let's, let's deal with taqwa from a linguistic perspective and then, and then take the discussion forward in a progressive way. From a linguistic perspective, brothers and sisters, and when I say linguistic, I mean the meaning of taqwa before the advent of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, right? Because we know the Arabic language existed before the advent of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And our sharia was revealed to us in the Arabic language. So it's using words that existed in the Arabic language. So what did taqwa mean before the advent of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam? Our scholars rahmatullahi alayhim say that taqwa linguistically referred to the method by which someone repels a particular harm or the tool used to repel a particular harm. And that is why the Arabs would say, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected this person. He shielded this person from harm. But as for the definition of taqwa, after the advent of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if we traverse through the books of the giants that walk the earth before us, the ulama, rahmatullahi alayhim, we find them teaching us about taqwa using different words, whilst in many a case we find the meanings of their words are close. And the reason for these different wordings and slightly different meanings, even though in general there's an agreement, is because of the various usages of taqwa by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his book. I'll show you some quick examples. In one ayah in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ayah which was revealed after alcohol became prohibited. Alcohol became prohibited. And Obviously, before the prohibition of alcohol, there were companions who passed away. They were believers in Allah. They were believers in the prophecy of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, but they passed away before alcohol became prohibited. So the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, those who were still alive, they went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and asked, what will be the plight of our brothers who passed away? For they passed away before this prohibition has come to us. And by Allah, this teaches us the love that the companions of the Prophet ﷺ had for each other. They loved each other. They cared for each other. They strove to look after the important matters of each other. Thus, even though some have passed away, those who remained are concerned about them. So when they posed this question, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, لَيْسَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا 
وعملوا الصالحات جناح فيما طعموا إذا ما اتقوا وآمنوا وعملوا الصالحات ثم اتقوا وآمنوا ثم اتقوا وأحسنوا Right? If you look at this ayah, you'll see taqwa has been mentioned three times in this ayah. It's been mentioned three times. Now, does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intend by mentioning taqwa three times a repetition of the word? Or is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intending a specific meaning that's different to the meanings understood from previous usages of the word? Our scholars, rahmatullahi alayhim, say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intended independent meanings, meaning the same word is used, but different meanings are intended. Thus they say, thus they say, that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the first taqwa in the sentence, he referred to avoiding shirk. Taqwa, at the beginning of the ayah, refers to avoiding shirk and perfecting your tawheed. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used it the second time in the ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used it to warn us against bid'ah and to command us towards protecting the sunnah. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used it for the third time in this particular ayah, they say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal Al-Wahid Al-Qahar used it to denote the importance of obedience and remaining upright upon obedience. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. Three times the same word is used, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intended different meanings, which teaches us, O servants of Allah and O children of Adam, that you, in your quest of acquiring taqwa or growing your taqwa during the month of this Ramadan and throughout the course of your lives, when we say we are chasing taqwa, we are referring to protecting our tawheed and staying away from shirk. And we are referring to reviving the sunnah and eradicating bid'ah. And we are referring to adopting piety and righteousness and staying away from that which causes retrogression. This is Fun, this is a fundamental understanding that we now have regarding taqwa from this particular ayah. Alhamdulillah. Right? So if a person is trying to revive the sunnah, we say, you are aiming to acquire taqwa. And when a person is aiming to perfect their tawheed, we say, you are aiming to acquire taqwa. And when a person aims to remain upon obedience, to stay away from lying, to stay away from backbiting, to control one's anger, and so on and so forth, we say that you are trying your best to acquire taqwa. Inshallah, you will understand these meanings this Ramadan as you live the fast of every day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease our fasts. I was telling your brothers and sisters in Manchester that mashallah this year I believe the first fast is around 19 hours and the last fast around 18 hours and I said alhamdulillah when Ramadan starts I will make sure I'm out of this country <laughs> sometimes my dear brothers and sisters Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word taqwa in his book and he intends by it you fearing something so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, That fear the day you will return to Allah. Meaning, fear the day you die and fear the day of judgment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word here with the, int with the intended meaning of us fearing something. And sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, What does this mean? Does it mean fear Allah? In many a translation, we find it translated as fear Allah. But our scholars, rahmatullahi alayhim, say that this refers to not staying away from Allah where you fear Him and you stay away and you lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you feel that you have no chance of turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't refer to this. Rather, it refers to fearing the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thus we learn from this, O servants of Allah and O children of Adam, that if you want to win in terms of taqwa this Ramadan, grow your fear for the day of judgment. This is from taqwa. And grow your fear 
regarding the punishments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for this is from the acquisition of taqwa as well. And sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word taqwa and he refers to it reverence and revering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيُحَذِّرُكُمُ اللَّهُ نَفْسَهُ the scholars rahmatullahi alayhim say that this is from the meanings of taqwa and Allah is commanding you to exalt him, commanding you to glorify him, commanding you to hold him in high regard so that whenever you do anything, you have Allah present with you. This is from taqwa as well. And that is why the person who begins their salah and they say Allahu Akbar, many a time it's translated as Allah is the greatest. And this is one of the meanings. But technically, it refers to Allah is greater. Akbar. Allah is greater. What is Allah greater than? Allah is greater than everything outside of my salah. When I say Allahu Akbar, everything outside of the salah is irrelevant. And Allah is greater than all these things. Allahu Akbar. This, O servants of Allah, and this, O children of Adam, is from the acquisition of taqwa. If only we understood. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase our knowledge.